my other non-residential Indian friends who grew up in Pakistan. Like this privileged, condescending, superiority complex kind of relationship where you make fun of Indian accent. I think in the past I used to have a lot of problems being bilingual in the sense that like, like if you have an accent, right, like especially if it's an Asian accent, like, like a British accent, everyone is like, oh, that's so hot. But Asian accents are really looked down upon. You know how Facebook gives you like reminders of posts you had like years back? Mm -hmm. I remember, I think it was back in 2009 or something, I made a post about like leaving for India. Here comes traffic, pollution, congestion. And I just gave a whole bunch of adjectives, all with negative connotations. I was really embarrassed at my mom a lot because she still speaks like broken English, even though she used to be an English preschool teacher in Korea. And I would have friends over, like white friends, and she just would not want to interact with them because she didn't want to speak English. And for me, I just didn't get that. Like I hated it, it made me so upset. I got into social work. I spent quite a lot of time in this place called Dharamshala, working with young Indian women. And for the first time, I was confronted by not only the preconceived derogatory notions I had of India and its people, but like of their own kind of inferiority complex in the face of a migrant, who they always assumed to be more knowledgeable, more articulate, richer, and basically the ones living on the better side of everything. Exactly. Like, my mom, I love her, she's wonderful. But from a pretty young age, I had to take on a lot of the, not like, not, not burden, but responsibility, kind of like a dad would have. I spoke English best out of all of my family members, so anytime we would go somewhere and like, ask for instructions or ask for directions, my mom would always send me to go and ask people. And I'm like, the sixth, seventh grader, like, I don't know jack so, shit. So my mom's like, you shouldn't have male friends. You shouldn't really be that into music or dance or or any of those sorts of things because they're not right or they're not proper. I want to go out places on my own with my friends and they'd be like, yeah, but it's not safe or it's not proper. And it's like, I want to stay out late. And they're like, that's not cool. I wanted, at one point when I was, this is when I was 12. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I want to wear, this is when skinny jeans were like starting to be a thing. And I was like, I want skinny jeans. And my mom's like, yeah, but it's too clingy. And it's dumb shit like that. It really is just the little thing. Yeah. And I would go and like ask them a question that my mom would tell me to ask. And I would come back and give her the answer. And she would get angry at me. She would be like, oh, you know, that's not what I was asking. Or like, like, why didn't you ask this follow-up question? And I would literally used to think that how the fuck am I supposed to know? Like, how do I logically, analytically derive another question based on their answer? Like, I don't know what's going on in the world. And so I think I used to be a little bit vindictive that she couldn't speak English as well as she could have because I had to grow up so much faster. So there's me at university, and then there's me at home with my parents, and then there's me at home in Pakistan. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So one of the things that I think is common across the culture that I've like lived in is that, like both like the Pakistani culture and like Arab culture is like the family unit is central to everything, and like that extends to like the extended family as well. So it's a priority that we go home to Pakistan at least once a year. And when we do, there's certain things that I will filter out, certain things that I have to explain. Mm -hmm. Like when we were around, my family will speak English more around the house. Yeah. And in return, I'm like slightly more proper, a little bit politer, I'll dress more traditionally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And those are just variations. Yeah. It's a matter of what are the elements of my personality that I'm going to amplify in this situation? What are the elements of my personality that I'm going to down? Like, like right? when we go home to visit my relatives, like it's almost as if they expect me to have changed. Like to behave in a very snobbish or pretentious, like not know how to speak my language anymore. And of course you want to love your family, you want to have conversations with them. And it gives me anxiety a lot when we go home to visit my relatives because they're assuming so much about me just by virtue of the fact that I left the country. When I was younger though, that used to piss me off so much. I'd be like, oh, I 
hate going home to Pakistan because I can't wear my own clothes. I can't do my own thing. But now I'm like, nah. If I can assimilate into Western culture, then I can assimilate back into my own culture. Yeah, but like conversation with my family back home sometimes becomes difficult. Like I want to tell them everything that I've seen and done, but it's hard to do to relate to it if you haven't seen and done the same things also. Yeah. And so I think our conversations just ends up being very superficial. But you come back from the U.S. though, and like all eyes are on you. People are like, oh, she's from the U.S. And like suddenly they treat you differently. Maybe it's because like it's this idealized world or like they don't really know what it is. One thing that happened though was in third grade, my teacher would always make me say like twinkle twinkle little star and she would be like, look at how perfect her English is. And I would have to do that once a week. Like while, like, while people were cleaning up, yeah. like within me singing twinkle twinkle little star, people would be cleaning like, up. I was made a word, I was foreign too and, and that came from my accent. When I speak Hindi, I would mispronounce certain words. Like, I was trying to teach these girls about like hygiene, like women's rights, like like go reach your dreams and stuff. And I couldn't because I couldn't articulate it in the right way. Yeah. Like I have to think in English and I have to translate that to them. And it's shit like that. People have expectation for you when you're like from the US. You're, you're an outsider, you become an outsider. Like even though I felt a connection to this place, I was made aware of how different I was. Like, if they got a hint that my accent was a little less Indian, mm. the price would go from like 500 to 1,000 in just a second. Yeah. And even when I say thank you in Hindi, like, it's just not a cultural thing. Just the way people spoke it, to you would change. It's the feeling of never being enough. Yes. The feeling of the constant state of I'm not quite this thing, but I'm not quite this other thing. Yeah. And so I don't so, really fit into either of these places. Yeah. And so I'm trying really hard to fit into one of them or both of them, but it's completely impossible. Yeah, oh okay. And I'm deeply burdened by the guilt of not being able to fit into both of them yes. or, or either of these like things that. or any of the things. Yeah. So it's like, what the fuck is me? No, Who the fuck but, am I? But like that, because Sunny isn't my real name. My legal name is still my Korean name. No way. Yeah, and I thought about changing it officially, but I was like, you know, I don't think I want to. Yeah. Because like my Korean name is my given name and it, what it means really encapsulates who I am. Because, okay, my Korean name is Sinthi and it stands for like, like shining brightly, like leading the way. And I think that fits really well. I think it translates really well into my nickname. Plus like it sounds really similar to Sunny. And as much as I am an American citizen, I'm also Korean. Like I was born in Korea. Yeah. It's part of who I am. It's like my root. I'm a Korean American and I don't want to throw away that it's Korean see, part, right? It's like that dynamic unsettled me so much. Like the foreignness and the familiarity has been like this dualistic feeling that I feel both in India and in Botswana. It's a, it's a you look like me, you talk like me, but you don't dress like, like something is off. Like, like why are you off? Your Korean is a little bit off, you have an accent. You look at the world differently. You don't care about the same things. You're off. They see you as American, right? Yeah. Same. In the UAE, I'm seen as Pakistani, but in Pakistan, I'm not seen as local. I idealize India in many ways. We have so much potential, and we're such creative people. But I'll have locals say to me, you know nothing of the reality of what it means to live here. Liberal.
and still, period. I'm very curious about everything, and I get excited about novelty and exploration. I want to see everything. And I think it's because we haven't stayed in one spot for too long. So, I don't deal well with, like, long-term periods in one place. So, yeah, I think, for me, home has become a sense of stability, I think, in some sense. Uh, for me, home has become Abu Dhabi. I left the UK when I was 13, and I don't recognize the country anymore. Like, especially now with Brexit, it's gone in the complete opposite direction from my way of thinking. Despite that, people will prescribe my Britishness to me. And like, sure, it's there, I can never escape that. But I went back recently, for the first time in like two years. It was the longest time I've been back since I left when I was a kid. I was there for a month, and I didn't feel welcome. It was uncomfortable being there. I remember I was sat on a train heading towards Yorkshire, and I had this feeling that the land itself was telling me, you don't belong here anymore. Anyone should be able to belong anywhere. Yes, culture matters, but it's not something that you have to say, this defines us. It's something that you go, okay, this is how we've been doing it for a very long time, but it doesn't define who I am as a person. For some reason, the fact that I am a US citizen is supposed to define who I am as a person, or the fact that my mom, who was born in DR, is supposed to define who she is as a person, I mean, all of that is starting to mean less than Yeah, but culture is so much more complicated than that, because it's culture versus, like, culture, religion, and where the boundary is, because there isn't much of one, in the sense that Cultural reasons come from religiously rooted places. And this is the thing about growing up in the diaspora, right? Where like, especially when I was younger, like I used to be very aware of the Pakistan Indian divide. It's like, it's ingrained in you. It's in the DNA of the country. It's in the stories that my grandfather tells. And growing up in the diaspora, you grow up away from it all. And it's easy to compartmentalize that and be like, yeah, well, we're basically the same. And the only reason we're divided is because colonial powers want to convenient to deepen those divides. Like, it made it easy to control this. And seeing things with this kind of like outsider's perspective, like the bigger picture, it's easy to say, yeah, we have more in common, and so like this division is stupid. Like, we joke about it, you know? Like, it's a joke, you know what I mean? Where we're like, oh yeah, solving the world's problems one India Pakistani friendship at a time. I don't think we have yet to accept or understand how industrialization, colonialism, globalization, the internet, any of that affects us at all. Because it was just too fast. I mean, it's like we're experiencing this moment of, of like cultural jet lag. Information and bodies move so much faster than they ever have before because there was a jump. There was, there was humanity and then there was progress, very slow progress, and then all of a sudden, the Industrial Revolution. It's like, wait, what? I can travel by train now? Great, let's move generationally for centuries. Suddenly boats, trains, planes, suddenly the internet. Suddenly me going to another country is so accessible, right? I mean, I think third culture kids of the future, because they were created from this moment, people who have only stayed from in their country, or sort of the past, it doesn't really exist anymore, yeah, yeah, or at least less and less so. But to say we're the future leaves other people behind, as if we're better yeah, than the exactly. To say we're the future means the future is only accessible to the few of us able to live but over the But we see ourselves as citizens of the world, but they see us as citizens of no I'm not nothing. saying of the reality of what it means to live And there. that's why I'm more comfortable being the foreigner, why Texas feels more like home than the UK. I mean, I think it's kind of funny, actually, in a sad sort of way. I lived in the US for more than seven years, but I lost my chance for a green card because my dad did some shit and got himself arrested for it. Basically, I ended up aging out of my visa, and I remember flying to Abu Dhabi on the last possible day I could be in the country, feeling stateless. I lived there for nearly eight years, most of my memorable life. I assimilated to the country, I embraced it and called it home, and if I'd stayed a single day longer, I'd have been deported. Because some shit my dad did, I lose my home. And like, it sucks, it really sucks. I mean, being ripped away from home will always suck. But I guess I can still create the opportunities to go back. 
I mean, it's going to take years. I've got to start from scratch, but eventually I can go back home. The reason I think it's kind of funny is like, one country officially rejected me, and the other country emotionally rejected me, right? I mean, I am a foreigner in the US. Everyone either gets it or doesn't care, but in the UK, it's this, it's this reverse culture shock, which is so off-putting. It's why I like places like Abu Dhabi, New York, too. It, it doesn't matter where you're from. Borders don't matter. Yeah, but that's your privilege speaking. Borders always matter. We might not want them to, but they always matter. Like, but you have a British passport. I have a Pakistani one. Like, it's the third worst passport in the world. I don't have the luxury of easy immigration. We're like, in this post-colonialist world where our opportunities are defined by where we're born. But our opportunities are also defined by our education. I mean, that's what's gonna get me back to the States. Everyone in front of us has access to education, and that's what's given us the opportunities to move beyond our borders. Yeah, freedom of movement is a beautiful but impossible idea because we've been royally fucked by colonialism. Like, globalization means westernization, and all anyone wants is that sweet American passport. Like, there's this hierarchy of culture that puts the West on top. Like, why do you think all third culture kids speak English? I'm not why can't I speak my mother tongue? I'm not going to pretend to understand the world we live in, or the world we're making. I believe in this impossible dream of a global, multicultural world. I truly want to look beyond our borders. But Brexit happened because people felt this world was leaving them behind. And now I feel abandoned because the UK thinks it can like face the world on its own. Brexiteers don't belong in my world, and I don't belong in theirs. But in Abu Dhabi, I found you guys. People who think like me and believe in the same dream I do. People who understand my experiences. Third culture kids. I love this world. My world. But it, it is far apart from reality. I don't think we're going to be able to do anything about this collapsing distance. If anything, these third culture people are the ones who are going to do something about it. And I think that something is eventually to get rid of these national borders. I don't know what that looks like, and I don't know what that means exactly, and I don't know that I entirely agree with myself either, to be totally honest with you guys. But it's something that I'm toying with, and playing with, and trying to understand because I think the issue actually is just nation states, right?
Try. 